is another beautiful Lord's day. You have kept us down to another week. Out of all that we've been through, we still love you. Because it's in you that we have our move and our being. We look to thee right now, Lord. We look to thee for strength. We look to thee for courage. We just look to thee, Lord, to help us run this race. And we say thank you. For you've been good. Your mercy is everlasting. Thank you, Lord. Because in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We honor the Lord today on this second Sunday in the month of September. It's just good to be here. There's so many that I know that wish that they could have been here. But because of multiple reasons, they're not here. And I'm going to encourage each and every one of you to serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Serve the Lord with gladness. All of us have our particular problem. But Jesus is the answer. God will solve all of our problems. But we got to take it to him. But then, even though we got a problem, worship the Lord. He promised that, though I'm with you, always, even to the end of the world. I'm standing on that promise. And even if I feel like I'm alone, I'm not alone. This morning I'm going to invite you to go with me again to 2 Samuel. The ninth chapter of uh, this Old Testament. Second Samuel. The ninth chapter is for your benefit of uh, reading in your leisure. But today we're going to take a message from there to many of you who are familiar with this in his preaching. It is a revisit to this ninth chapter of 2 Samuel. We read it for a text. It is the seventh verse. That seventh verse has to do with David, the king, responding to the presence of Mephibosheth. And we pray that this message today is relevant for all of you that it will fit somewhere in your life. Whether it will encourage you or whether it will instruct you. I declare I'm not up here just for a feel-good moment. All right. The whole time we have been misled by the entertainment of preaching. All right. You leave saying I didn't feel nothing. Preaching of the gospel has nothing to do with your feeling. If you are instructed and if you are encouraged, it'll make your life better. Verse 7 of this 2 Samuel chapter 9 reads on this wise, And David 
said unto Mephibosheth, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for your dad, Jonathan, said, And I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and I shall eat bread at my table continually. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee in all the land of Saul thy father, and I shall eat bread at my table continually. I want to talk a while about showing kindness and fulfilling promises showing kindness and fulfilling promises. Can you help me? Showing kindness. Y'all ain't helping me at all. <laughs> I'm asking, can y'all help me say this? Showing kindness and fulfilling That is the message today that I invite your meditation for this time. Showing kindness and fulfilling promises. This is nothing new as we talk in this message today, it's, it's nothing new to many of you to talk about kindness. It's nothing new to talk about promises. When you take the word kindness and umbrella other words such as affection, charity, love, compassion, goodness, and grace, favor, help, good deeds, and service. All of this comes under the umbrella of kindness. But then when you take the word promise, promise, it, it, it's really is the umbrella of a shoe. Contract. Engage. Pledge. Vow. Covenant. Oh. And your word. Your word ought to be your bond. Your word ought to be you when you speak truth. So, to talk about kindness, talk about promise, all of us who are God's children ought to demonstrate kindness. But scripture teaches us to be kind one to another. You deserve my kindness and I deserve your kindness. The text talks about David the king. It was him in the open verse of this ninth chapter when David said, Is that yet in it that is left of the house of Saul? David had rose up. He was in a position of power. He was now the king of Judah. And matter of fact, he was the top man. He was the king. But David was the man who did not forget 
where he comes from.
Say my plea. I see him coming in. He thinks he's going to hold my position. Somebody's going to hold your position. All right. Jonathan and the Philistine should have been an heir to the 
Oh, God. 
when she done made it too hot. All right. And hell is in the house. All right. Do you think about the promise you made for your bills? God declared Finance is funny. All right. You can't hide. The promise you made for the rest of your life, you got a fulfilling promise. Look like I'm in here by myself. You promise to take her for
yourself back. Let me show you here in verse number 11. Then said Zebah, Zebah unto the king, according to all that the Lord has commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for me, to himself, said the king, he shall eat at my table at one of the king's sons. It is in my conclusion, David showed kindness to a crippled man by bringing him to the king's palace, by giving him a position at the king's table, and then began to fulfill his promises that he made to his friend Jonathan. He had told Jonathan that he would restore all that saw the king had lost in the past. All right. So Mephibosheth became rich because he received that which his grandfather had had. And Mephibosheth, verse 13, it said Mephibosheth dwelled in Jerusalem. I like that boy because he had a table that he could sit down even though he was crippled. Even though he called himself a dead dog. So you see when Mephibosheth came to where they was, uh, he found himself